Hello everyone. Welcome to another Jay Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting something by special request. Someone asked me uh, to paint a picture for them or to provide a canvas painting project for them for a group of uh, seniors uh, with an aid uh, to kind of say thank you for the service that the aid provides the senior at the senior resident community. Uh, this is not normal for me to record these because this particular project really isn't for sale. But I still wanted you to see how even upon someone requesting something, how we would handle it. And just remember, it's symbolic. So we're not going for a lot of details. And the seniors themselves will be painting this project and then giving it as a gift to their aide. And a lot of the residents are young at heart. And they run from ages around uh, 70 to literally 101 or two years old. And these are actual participants who will be painting this project. So with Peel Off, we designed this project with that in mind so that the target customer wouldn't have a whole lot to do. Now, this is a program that Jay Robinson Art provides uh, in New Jersey where we physically go around to communities and paint with them. This just happens to be a special request by one of those communities, me sharing the video uh, with you. So I'm going to be painting the sample here. And of course, you got to understand there are a few things in play here. The seniors will be painting the project, but I will physically be there to help them along the way. There are a few parts in the project that are going to require a little bit of assistance from me, from the staff, and from... Uh, my lovely wife assistant. So I just wanted you to understand the dynamics so that when you see certain parts, you're not gonna be overwhelmed thinking, oh my gosh, she's stressing these residents out. Absolutely not. We make our projects fun, easy, and creative. So without further ado, I'm still gonna show you what you would get if this were a Jay Robinson art project. There's a lot of paints here today, so you definitely aren't gonna be using them in, in a great deal, but I'll explain as I go along. Let me just talk about the equipment. We always like to provide you with a plastic apron. We give you one paper towel, which we highly recommend that you try to have several others on hand. We provide you with a spatula to remove the peel. We give you a nice uh, painting brush set that comes with a variety of different tips and uh, shapes so that you can paint a lot of the projects with it. And we give you the series of paints. Now, the main colors we're going to be using is white, black, blue, and they wanted a heart. Now, we'll show you the option of having the heart or not red. The other colors that I'm going to show you is because there are a series of balloons that are going to be at the top. And we're going to be using these colors to make the balloons. So, basically, what we have is purple, yellow, pink. And green. Some of these colors we're going to be using white to make a lighter version of that color so that there may be two balloons that are purple, one dark, one light, two balloons that are pink, one light, one dark, like that. Not necessarily in that order, but we'll, we'll see as we go along. So here's the project. And what we've done is we provided these balloons that you can't see that are up here. And here are the representation of the aid and the resident. Okay, and now we're just going to get into painting it. And I'll, I should have pointed out also on the side, I have a cup of water. And of course, I like to use my trusty beat up brushes that I love to have on my projects. And without further ado, we're going to get started. Okay, here are my colors that I've laid out sort of in a clock format. I'll definitely not be using half as much as what's here for the balloon parts. But this blue and white is what I'm going to start with to make my background. I'm going for a kind of a, a sky color. And even though it's on black, I take a little bit of white and a touch of blue. I'll try to show you here. And I'm going to make kind of a light blue color. And I'm just going to kind of start splashing that around from top to bottom. Now remember, I am painting on black, so it may take me a, a couple of strokes to get in the, the sky color that I want, but I am going for a, a, a daylight, kind of a warm, soft, light blue sky. So I'm just going to be adding mostly white to get it going, and then I'll put some blue on top of it. 
because I just want to streak this in here just to block this in. And again, you really can't see the balloons, but you can see the basic shape. And I would tell you how I prepped all this, but again, that's not really important. Today, what I'm just trying to do is I'm just going to show you how uh, you can take a, a person's idea with a peel off and make it so that that literally seniors can paint um, whether they have skills or not. It's just about having some fun, pushing around a few colors, as I always say, and just being creative. So that's basically what I'm sharing with you is a project that I've been asked to do at one of the communities that we go around to. And this just happens to be something that I think is very fun, very easy, very cute. And I just wanted to catch it on camera. This that I'm painting right now is the sample painting that I'll be showing them in the beginning of the project. Then each resident will get their equipment because when we go, we bring everything that you need. All they have to do is show up, sit down and have some fun. So with that being said, each person would get their own everything. And then we'll just get started just like this where I'll be telling them to mix the colors as I'm showing you here. And then just start splashing it from top to bottom till we get a kind of a, a nice light blue kind of a sky coloration. Once I get to the bottom, I'll determine if I want to go darker or lighter in places. But right now it's looking pretty good. And everything we do with our residents is done in steps and a lot slower than what I'll be doing in this video because you have to allow for them to uh, kind of comprehend what you're asking and then to do it. So it's not a race. It's not a rush. No one's pressured to be great, good or whatever. We just want to make sure that each person completes each step because while we're painting as a group, no one gets left behind. So with our program, it doesn't matter about the level of skill or even the level of, of, of uh, abilities. It's just all about a person taking on a, a craft and just having some fun with it. So I think I'm gonna go a little darker in my blue up towards the sky. So I'm just gonna try to grab a little bit of darker blue, start introducing that. Now that I have a slight layer of color, the beautiful thing about acrylics is you can definitely layer your paintings. And for purposes of the sample in the video, I want it to be as attractive as possible and allowing for people to paint within their own abilities this very same project. Now, maybe what I'll do is I can't show pictures unless I get a release signed of the individual's painting, which oftentimes we do. But in some cases, HIPAA prevents that. So what I might do for you is maybe in another video show you what they did by taking pictures of their individual paintings and uh, then sharing them with you because you'll see this video of the how-to. So you might as well see a video of what they did. Okay, this looks pretty good to me. This looks pretty good to me. Because again, all I really wanted was some kind of a sky uh, background and I have it there. Now to break it back, I'm going to come in now and add a little terra firma, a little dark color, because it's kind of a silhouetted picture with color, because I wouldn't want them to have to paint all of the clothing and the different designs on the person, so these people will be silhouetted. The sky will be a nice blue. The balloons will be individual colors with strings hanging down. And should I decide to incorporate a heart in the picture, I would just put it like literally right behind the people. Now again, that's an optional thing. So what I'll probably do is just paint this one all the way through and then let my residents decide if they want a heart before we uh, start getting too far. But right now I'm just gonna continue on. I'm gonna take the brush even though it's dirty, grab a little black. And I know that the feet are right here. So what I'm gonna do is just streak in some color right along the feet area so they'll have something to stand on. And then I'll show you how we can elaborate on that just a touch. So now you can leave it flat like this as ground. 
but I'm not. And I'm not going to ask them to. This I will be asking of them. So now that I have that, I'm going to clean off my brush. Bang it from side to side. I like to wipe my brush on the paper towel like this versus crumpling it up. Usually stays flat on the surface, but you couldn't see that if I did it like I am now away from you. But I just leave it on the table and just run the brush on top so I could get it nice and flat again. Put that to the side. Now I'm going to pick up this little script liner brush. Dip it into some water. Twist it so I could bring it back to a point. And then I'm going to go right into the black and I'm going to pull up some little grassy things. Just some little lines that look like like some little grass is just, you know, standing up high like they're walking through a park-like environment. So I'm just going to pull this all the way across. See how I'm crisscrossing? Almost like making little X's. Really, they're just lines. And I'm going to do this all the way across just to give some indication that there's some kind of grass underneath their feet like so that's fine come over here and just keep going I'm just gonna keep pulling up little lines clean off my brush again run it around just to bring it back to a point go back into some color and then just politely keep going across kind of making what I call little X's if you will I go a little left a little right it's nothing really fantastic about this just to give that indication. See, just like so. You could put little flowers down here if you want. I mean, you got a lot of colors working, but we're not gonna go too detailed because like I told you, this is a project for my residents. I don't want them struggling that hard. Now, if I were going to, just gonna talk this through. If I were going to put a heart here, I might take white paint and just paint in a heart shape that would be right behind these people for the love. But I'm going to leave that off of this sample and I'll probably only do that with my residents in case they wanted to go that detail. But I want to see how far they would get without it before I incorporate it. And with my residents, if you put birds in here, flowers down here, hearts over here, they're going to want to paint all of that. And what I want them to do is focus in on the basics just to see where we go, how far we can get, how comfortable everyone is before I ask them to do anything that's extra or strenuous. So with that being said, you can imagine that there would be a red heart right behind here should they decide to go that route. When I show you the pictures later, you'll see how many chose to put a heart, how many didn't, and it'll make sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to peel off the balloons because I want to start that project because with the balloons, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different balloons, eight different colors. And to me, that's where I want them to spend most of the time. Again, should they want to do a heart, we'll put a nice white background of a heart shape here. We'll still go to the balloons, then they'll come back and paint that red. And maybe in the end, I'll show you that part. But for right now, let's just keep moving on. There's silhouetted people here. Once we remove the peels, the black will stand up. We'll clean up any edges if we decide to. But here's where I really want to concentrate. Now, I prep this in a way that when I peel these off, you're going to see that they're white, dry canvas, because I put them on first before I painted the background, because I wanted to have these clean so that the colors would stand up when we painted them. So all I'm looking for is the shape. All I'm looking for is balloon shapes. And with, with those balloon shapes, I now can have the ability to uh, paint the colors on top of this and they'll actually stand up a lot more than like the heart that would have to have been painted um, white right there. So anyway, let me just keep going. Let's just peel off this last set of balloons. And if you haven't guessed it already, that's where the thank you is going to go. 
Because in each one, it'll be a T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U. But what I want to do is make sure I get all of the little pieces off. Sometimes you just got to take your time. And go in. Make sure all of the little pieces are removed. This is where the strings are going to go. So now, now that we have that, now we're going to start our coloration. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch brushes. I'll probably go to one or two detail brushes. These two right here will be fine for this job. And because this is a long handled brush, I'm going to work with this one so I can stay out of your way. And now let's go to the colors that we have. And I need um, to make sure that I have everything. So let's go first, we're gonna go with a little bit of purple. So here, now this is the tricky part. And this is where I would be helping them. Some of these balloons are in front of other balloons. So rather than have them fight, this is where I would come around maybe with a, a little bit of color and just kind of draw this in there for them like this. I would say, okay, here's a balloon here. This one's going to be purple. So by making that line, that separates these two balloons. So then they would just go in and they will be able to do this. My residents are very, very capable artists. Uh, you should see some of the work that they've done. It is amazing. And of course, Peel Off and Jay Robinson Art has been there helping them the whole time. But not as you might think. They use their own hand in painting these pictures. So now I'm going to come around and I'm just going to add some purple for this balloon. And I may hit that again. It depends. So now I'm just going to go in, fill that area. And let that be the purple balloon right here. See? So here's one balloon already done. Now, remember I told you that it's possible you can add white. So I'm going to take some white and some purple. Be sure you hear it. I'm just going to mix up a light purple. Because I want to go with another purple balloon. But this one I want to be over here and I want it to be in the front. So now I would take and draw the shape for them like so. For some of them, because some have a little trouble seeing and it's my job to help out. And now I'm going to paint this balloon light purple. So I may go back later before this is all said and done and hit this purple here one more time. Just so that it could be nice and dark. And again, like I always try to teach you in my classes, acrylic paints are very good for layering, glazing. You can put on a color, leave it, let it dry, put it again, and it'll get even darker. So there, there's, a, there's two balloons, okay? So let's go to the next balloon that's over here. This one is just going to be orange. So I'm just going to go right into some orange. I cleaned off my brush. I'm going to pick up some orange. And I'm going to come right next to this line. And I'm just going to paint this balloon in nice and orange. Just let it flow. Take my time. Maintain the shape. Now I have to determine, is the yellow balloon in the front or in the back? And I want the, the yellow one to be in the front of the orange. So I'm going to make a little shape of orange here. To show that the orange balloon, while it's in front of the purple, will be behind the next balloon shape. So I use the purple as my line because then I could come up to it and make it look neat like that. Now I could have used the next colors balloon, but it's okay. Either way is fine. Shows the separation. So now I have those two. Am I going with a lighter orange? No. So I'm going to leave that. The next color... I'm going to go with is yellow. Clean off my brush. I pick up some yellow. And I'm determining that the yellow balloon will be in front of all of these balloons. So now the two sides are showing that the yellow balloon is in front of the orange balloon. 
and it will be in front of the next color balloon. So I'm just gonna take my time, fill this in. You see, this is before the lettering, this is before anything. And this is, is where I want my residents to spend most of their time. This is all colorful, fun, and this is where they're gonna write the words in themselves to say thank you to the aides who provide such super service. I don't think there's any place that I go to that that isn't true. They're superheroes. So now, we use blue to make our background. So we already have blue, but why don't we take some blue and a little bit of white, and let's stir us up a nice light blue. Like really light, really, really light. The more white to the blue, the lighter it'll get. So let's take that blue, and now let's determine, is that one gonna be in the front? And I say yes, so we're gonna make this the line that's gonna go here, like so. Now this is gonna be behind the yellow, so we'll go like a little bit of a curve there. We'll come here and trick it out, and now we'll just block this in for a nice light blue balloon. Sits up against the sky, totally different bluish color. Stands up on its own. And there, so now we have four balloons on that side, one on this side. So for this next one, I'm thinking green. So we'll clean off our brush, pick up a little green, go right next to the blue, make our little line here, and then we'll just begin to block in this last balloon for the thank you part, for the thank part of the thank you, for the first word. See, taking my time, looks pretty deep, neat, right? We haven't added strings yet, we haven't added the letters yet, but now we're getting all of these different balloon colors and the painting will have a brightness and a smile about it. And this is where they're gonna put the words to say thank you. Because remember, this is all symbolic. This is not about the residents painting uh, portraits of people or real life imagery. It's, it's all symbolic because they just wanted to show their appreciation and I was asked by the activities coordinator to come up with an idea that would be something they can give as a gift that would show a resident and an aide. And this, again, is my simple little idea. All right. So now that we have that, let's go with some red. Let's take some red. Every time you hear that click, click, that's me cleaning off my brush. These two balloons are going to go behind, but let's come over here now and add some red. See how the red pops it? And remember, we can still add a red heart here, and we're working on the thought of whether we're going to show you that or not, because I don't want to take too much of an overwhelming sample when I can do it there with them should they decide that's what they'd like to do. Whenever I go, it's a team effort. I come up with a project, but we can make changes right there on the spot to add or remove things that may prove to be either something that they don't like or too challenging for them. So you always gotta keep that in mind when you're painting for a group. It's not about you, it's about them. Okay, so now we got one more balloon. I think we're gonna go with pink but not dark pink, we're gonna go with light pink. So we're gonna take a little bit of this pink, or heck, you could even you could even bypass that. You could take a little bit of red and a little bit of white and make yourself a really nice light pink. That's a very nice light pink right there. So we're gonna go with that. I like that one better. See what I mean about changes? So now with this, I'm gonna come back here and I'm just gonna add the pink. Now you could always, uh, what they call cartoon this if you wanted to, by adding black lines around everything to make them stand up even stronger and show more individuality. But uh, I think we're going to leave it just like it is. Because I'm liking it just the way it's going right now. And again, that little extra line work 
might make something a little bit difficult for some. Now, all my residents are not the same in their abilities. There are some who are experienced artists. I mean, they are phenomenal. Well, there are others who just do it as a craft, as a activity. So now, let's take a look. Take a step back, see where we're going to go. I want to hit that purple one more time. So I'm going to go right into the dark purple. Clean off my brush, and I'm just going to go right on the top. And look at this. See how that purple is now sitting on itself? And look how much darker that is. Only, and it's not me, and it's not the fact that I put a lot of color it's the color on top of itself that's doing that. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. You can do this all day long and get this as dark as a plum. And this is kind of a watercolor technique that you can use with acrylics that happens to be a water-based medium. So if you let the paints dry and go on top of the actual color with the same color, you just get a darker, 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 darker version of itself. And a lot of times you can use this to your advantage as an artist to help show all kinds of juiciness in fruits, flowers, people, whatever you're painting. I mean, depending on how you want to represent it. So now this is looking good. So I think I want to do one more. Some of the mixture colors I'm going to leave, the orange I'm going to leave. I want to go with that green one more time. I just want to hit that one more time. I don't want everything to look pastel. I want to have some in and out, some dark against light, light against dark. So here I'm just going to add one more coat of green. And believe me, you can build this green up to an almost Kelly green if you just want it to go like 50 times over and over and over and over and over. And some artists, they do that. See, see how much richer that looks? And I think I'm going to hit the red one more time. Why not? We have time. We have nothing but time. So I'm just going to go over the red, which hasn't completely dried, but it's dry enough that you can see a distinct difference between the layering of that second coat over the first coat. See? Look at how rich, how rich that looks. That looks good to me. That looks really good to me. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for a second. I'm going to come down here. Now again, while this is kind of setting up, if you wanted to, you could always paint yourself a heart shape that could go right behind these people in white. Get it the way you want it. Let it dry. And then come back and hit it with red. But like I said, I'm going to leave that for now, and I'm gonna go with something else. Maybe we'll add some some little some little florals down here since we use all these colors up here, right? That would be kind of cool. Now I want to put some strings. Excuse me. I want to put some strings on each of these balloons, and to do that, you definitely want to use a script liner brush. That could come to a nice fine point and allow you to um, make little little lines. Now I want to show you a trick. You see this brush? See this script liner brush we've been using? See how fuzzy it got while it dried? The way you would fix that, I'm gonna show you right on the camera, is you would just dip it into the water. You don't have to dry it, just dip it into the water. It's the same brush. You you just take it on the paper towel. And you turn it slightly, not push it too hard. And I'm turning it, and boom, look how it comes right back to a point. It's the same brush. I know you saw a little off and off camera, but I'm telling you, it's the same brush. It's just you dip it in the water, you roll it on the paper towel slightly, lightly, just around like that, and it brings it right back to a point. Now, we want that point and maybe a little bit of that water in it so that we can make a nice, string-like effect. And the thing about the strings, we'll start from the back back here. You want a little line that runs across the balloon's bottom like so. And then you just, just want to imagine that there's a string wherever it comes out from here and it kind of wiggles. Like that. See? 
Again, touching lightly into the white. You make a little line at the base. Then you come here and you just kind of let the balloons be different. See? Go back into the water a little bit, bringing it back to a point. Touching a little bit of white. I know a lot of people, when they go into their colors, they tend to go hard. But you don't have to. You can go right to the edges of the color. You don't have to dip in the middle. Then over here we have this one. Maybe it wiggles a little bit more than the others, just because we want it to. We just want to pretend that each of these balloons is floating independently, but yet bringing a word together. You know, so, so we're kind of making the balloons anthropomorphic because they're not real balloons. They're painted balloons, and now we're giving them life. It's like, believe it or not, Bugs Bunny is anthropomorphic. He's a cartoon rabbit, but he acts like a human. He has life. He's doing something that has lifelike characteristics. That's what anthropomorphic means. And so in this instance, we're going to take our balloons and we're going to let them kind of float. But they're floating together and coming together with letters on them to say, thank you. Your letters could be black. Your letters could be white. Your letters could be whatever color you desire them to be. I think we're going to start out with white. See how that works. Because if it doesn't work, then we can go over them with black. But if we make them black, it's a lot harder to go over them with white. You notice I said harder, but not impossible. So let's go here. We're coming down to a few more. I'm trying to make the wiggles like a little different. On each, on each one so they're not all quite wiggling the same. But they show movement, which I think is key. Then we'll come here and we'll just make a little bit of a wiggle, 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 like so. Now, I also think, using the same pointed brush, that a few of these balloons could use a little highlight. So I'm gonna go up here and kind of show a little bit of a reflective highlight on each one of these, even the yellow one. Just a little bit of a highlight of a line that's like right at the very, very top area, like that. That one's really still wet. There. That gives them a little bit of a look, and now, I'm going to take this same brush, and it doesn't have to be perfect penmanship. We're going to make a T. We're going to make an H. Going to load up. That's all I'm doing on the side here. We're going to make an A. We're just going to write out the word thank you. That one's kind of hard to see because it's in the yellow, but it's okay. You, you'll make it out. Your mind will show you now that we made the other letters. You automatically see the A, even if the A seems almost invisible. Because our brains work that way. To where it'll put the, the word together for us. So now we're going to put a K. And yes, my residents will be writing this themselves. I'm sure I'll get a couple of them to say, Could you help me write this for me? And I'll probably say, well, why don't you try, see what you can do, and then I'll come in and fix whatever you think is not right. Because I love to see their own hand in everything. Now we'll make an O. You get any idea? See? Now we'll put a U. And now our balloons say, thank you. What do you think? Pretty good, right? I think it's pretty good. So now we have our balloons floating. I want to have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to come with my script liner brush, bring it back to a point. And maybe down in here, I want to put in a few lines that are kind of long as if these lines represent flowers. So I may not need a whole lot of them, Maybe I'll put a few on this side, kind of overlap. A few long ones on this side. Let it overlap a little bit. 
because I'm going to just take some color and I'm just going to dance in some flowers because I think that would also look nice. So I'm going to go back over here and go to the end and have some coming in from the side. Okay, so now those long lines, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take color. Let's go with red first. Show you what I mean. And I'm just going to tap, tap, tap in some flowers. So that's a red one. Maybe there's a red one over here. Just, just like that. Now let's tap in another color. Hmm, let's go with some... Let's go with some pink. See how this pink is going to show up. Maybe some pink with some white will show up even nicer. And then we'll grab a flower, let's say here, and tap in some pink. Maybe back here is a pink. They don't have to be in the same position, on the same side. And then maybe we'll take some yellow. We'll tap in a little bit of yellow on a couple of these. We're just, we're just giving like some indication that there's some kind of flowers, wildflowers that are growing in this, this walk because we can, because we can make things any way we want to. Maybe there's some orange. Grab a little bit of orange, go for a little orange shape. What do you think? We could even use white. There's white flowers, just straight white. We could just grab some white. Maybe there's something growing white right here. Maybe there's something growing white back here. So now, we've given our groundwork a little flowers. We've given our balloons a little flowers. And even if I still wanted to put the heart here, I still could paint it white and then paint it red, and then maybe pull some of these lines back on the front. But again, I'm going to leave that for my residents. I'm so, so sorry. And you could even tap some stuff that's down here on the ground if you wanted to with, with colors. But now we're going to peel away our people, see if we need to clean up any interior lines. Just going to grab my spatula. I always like to clean off my equipment. and Leave it to the side, ready to go. We're going to use the neck. Stick anywhere in here to get the people started. I'm gonna try to go up high so I can get that. And then come over here and get this. And then we're just gonna peel these people away. And there, there's our painting. So simple, like I said, not too complex, not too complicated. You could always Take your uh, brush with black on it because it'll dry flat and go in and just cover up some of these dots or any, any markings that you don't like that you think are, are not representative of your painting and you can just eliminate all of those things. They'll dry flat like the canvas later. So I'm just going to do this really quickly, show you how to can clean up inside. See, it's like so you can do the edges if you want, but I think for all intent of purpose, our painting is definitely looking like an appreciative thank you. And I'm sure that the heart would look great. But again, I'll show that to you afterwards. But for all intent, what do you think? Well, thank you for watching me paint this painting for my senior resident community who I'm going to be going to and we're going to paint this together as a group. And I just wanted to share this with you because I think all experiences with painting are worth sharing, even though this is not a kit you can buy. But you can definitely go to jrobinsonart.com if you happen to be a community in New Jersey and you're looking for us to come out physically to your location. And if you should have a special event that's coming up, a family night, uh, any kind of a project that you think would be representative of something that you want to share with your group, you can just let me know and I'll create some samples for you and you can tell me if you want them or not. Or you could just come have us come out to you monthly to do our programs. And should you be out of state, we also have a very nice program where we mail kits out of state 
in bulk at a very different price, much lower than what we sell our individual kits for because we want to also give to our communities, um, not just take. So it's kind of a balance. However, please go to peeloff.com if you want to see some of the kits that we have to offer and let us know what you like, what you don't like. Stay in touch with us. Subscribe to our peeloff.com YouTube channel, which is slightly different from the browser peeloff.com, which would take you to our peeloff website. So with that being said, thank you for letting me come and paint with you. I hope you had fun. I enjoyed it. And remember, always have fun, put around a few colors, and be creative. Until next time, I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.